Let's get back to the drive on the home of the Sens, TSN 1200. Now it's time for Need to Know Basis. Hour two of the drive. Lieber Sage, AJ Jackiebeck, and Mac Connors Vita. The big news in the Canadian football or in the NFL, what you need to know is that Cam Newton was cut by the New England Patriots. Mac Jones is going to be the starter for Bill Belichick. And uh, sticking with the NFL, the New Orleans Saints put uh, Michael Thomas on the, the pup list, the physically unable to perform list for week one. And in week one, it's very realistic that the Saints will not play in New Orleans. And uh, they will host that week one game in Dallas uh, with Hurricane Ida and Tropical Storm Ida, who causing all sorts of damage, unfortunately, uh, in Louisiana. We have the Women's World Hockey Championship gold medal game tonight, 730. Canada and the U.S. right here on TSN 1200. As we move to tennis, Dennis Shapovalov playing Federico Del Bonis in the first round at the U.S. Open. El Chapo up 5-2 with the serve. So in full control of set number one. And we'll keep you abreast on that. The Edmonton Elks have released a Jacob Ruby, national offensive lineman, due to a breach of COVID protocols. Connor Murphy has been extended by the Chicago Blackhawks four years, $17.6 million. And as we've already been discussing, uh, the PGA may ban fans for yelling Brooksy at Bryson DeChambeau. And others, they have updated their fan conduct policy ahead of this week's tour championship at East Lake in Atlanta. And uh, that's what you need to know. Uh, Dennis Shapovalov, just two points away from winning uh, the first set. And uh, Felix Oje Aliasim uh, winning yesterday. The men's side off to uh, a nice start here at uh, the U.S. Open. Uh, AJ, back to. The NFL, uh, not only does Cam Newton get cut here by the Patriots, I thought it was interesting that the Cowboys cut Garrett Gilbert and Dominic DiNucci, a couple of quarterbacks, and you might not know those names. They did come in, both of them, after Dak Prescott got hurt last year. But Cooper Rush is the only guy they kept, and there are reports that the Dallas Cowboys will look at Cam Newton. I'm sure other teams will. They're going to have to do their their homework on why he was cut from the New England Patriots this late going into a season and whether Cam Newton can come in and be a backup somewhere. I would doubt very highly that at this stage and what happened in New England that he can come in and be a starting quarterback. Yeah, I mean, I, I think... Uh... I'm curious to see how that would play out in Dallas, right? Just given the fact that, you know, we we talked about this last hour about guys that are deemed to be distractions as a backup quarterback and that you don't really want your backup quarterback to be a distraction. That being said, if you're talking about the Dallas Cowboys and you're talking about the injury troubles that Dak Prescott went through last year, I think it's imperative that they have somebody that can come in. And and from all accounts, Cam Newton had a pretty good camp, right, in New England. He looked pretty good in preseason. Mm -hmm. So this is a guy that can still play. You you can't have a major drop-off if Dak Prescott suffers another injury. Yeah, I do believe, like... This sounds really weird to say, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, that the Dallas Cowboys have done enough to create an environment where Cam Newton wouldn't be a distraction as far as the quarterback position. That's not to say that there's not a lot of other distractions, and Dallas is very famous for having distractions. But I don't think if Cam Newton came into Dallas that— there would be this, oh, is, if Dak Prescott's not playing well in game one, 
is Cam Newton going to get in? I think they've created an environment and paid Dak Prescott enough that Dak Prescott's starting quarterback. Oh, yeah. A- no. end, end of story. But but you have to be a little more leery about, I, I don't. The injury. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, I know you that. You need somebody but... that's capable, and you're not talking about a guy that, you know, you're talking about a guy that's coming off a major injury. Yes. No, I agree with that. I'm just saying whether people believe or not, and from all accounts, Cam Newton was fantastic in New England as far as doing everything he needed to do, not being anything but a model citizen when he was there under Bill Belichick. It's just that his foot got in the way a little bit of of him playing up to his capabilities. And they didn't have a very talented team around them either in New England. But there are some places that he could go that he would be an instant distraction as far as looking over the shoulder of the first-ring quarterback. No? Let's say he went to your team in Washington. Ryan Fitzpatrick is a starter, right? Yeah, I I mean, they got Heineke, so. Okay. Great that they have Heineke. If Cam Newton comes in and Ryan Fitzpatrick isn't playing well, there'll be calls to put Cam Newton in, I I would think. Well, they're not calling Cam Newton because obviously they feel like Heineke is a capable backup. But my Okay. My point is, is there are teams around the NFL that it would be an instant distraction if the starting quarterback didn't play well in week one or two. And my only point to you is that Dallas would not be one of those teams. I think the Dallas fans would be calling for Cam. I don't think the organization would like internally feel any pressure to put him in, but I think you're uh, overestimating the fan base of your team. Really? I think so. As, okay. Because of the injury. And if Dak struggles, people are going to, well, he's not healthy, let's put Cam in and let Dak get healthy. Okay, I wouldn't be one of those people, and I don't know if, and that's why I'm asking you guys. I I don't think he would be a distraction, but again, why I think do- at this stage in his career, Cam's going to be a distraction anywhere. Do do I think, and is that fair? Maybe, maybe not. That's a different conversation. I agree with you that the Dallas Cowboys are better prepared to handle that distraction because they're the Dallas Cowboys. But I think the New England Patriots are another team that were prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And of course, the New England Patriots aren't the same without Tom Brady, but Bill Belichick is still running the show. And so they're, they're the other team that I, if, if I've got a team where I'm not worried about how distracting a player is going to be, the Patriots are right at the top of that list. So the fact that Cam got cut, I think, says a lot here. Now, I agree with you that the Cowboys are better prepared than most teams, but I still think he would be a big distraction. All right, we'll see how it works out here with Cam Newton. Uh, let's get to some of the texts at 12 1200 talking about the golf. A lot of them coming in. Uh, what I like the one from Brent. Can I read Brent's? Go ahead. Good afternoon, lads. Based on the latest PGA Tour rule change regarding fans, I'm wondering if there's a fan code of conduct for the Pickleball League. Oh, okay. If there isn't, I'm willing to join Maddie and AJ at mm-hmm. Lee's semifinal match to shout out David Wilcox lyrics. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> From Brent. You know what, Brent? I'm in. Brent. Hey, Lee, do the Bearcat! Do the Bearcat, Lee! Brent, what you're overestimating right now is the actual want and ability for AJ and Connors Vita to actually make it out to that event. <laughs> they, I don't know if you're overestimating that. There is no way that both of you would go to that event simply to yell David Wilcox. If it comes lyrics. to David Wilcox? What if we brought out like a old school ghetto blaster and boom, 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 boom. <laughs> I'm all in for that. Oh, me too. Is music allowed during pickleball matches? 
hey, it's a public facility. You guys can do what you want. What if we play better? What if that ends up being the reason why? Then power to you, because then you'll okay. be happy and gloaty on the air, <laughs> and that's fine. I, like a fired up, happy Lever yeah. Sage. It's not about. I, I it's could easy care for less us to work with. If you win or lose, like it <laughs> makes no difference in my life if you win or lose. But just to sit there, I don't get to see mm-hmm. the facial reactions when David Wilcox comes on every day. But I, you're missing out because it's great. Have a picture in my mind, <laughs> and I enjoy that. All right. So to actually see it in person. Maybe Jay Monahan should focus on clowns who yell, get in the hole, when they're beside the tee box on a 535-yard par 5. I don't disagree with that text. That happens way too often while you're watching golf. Shambo cannot take any jokes. He brought it on himself with his attitude from Spencer. Yeah, but again... There's bringing it on yourself, and then if it crosses the line to mean spirited, mm-hmm. where it's basically abusive. Okay, so let's go back to last week just to put this into picture for a lot of people. AJ, when Bryson DeChambeau tried to get the fan kicked out of the event, that was after he lost the playoff, right? On his walk back to sign his card? Yeah, I'm not sure on the timing. Okay, it was. Okay. So, as Bryson has lost a playoff in six holes and is walking up. I got news for you, Bryson. The event's over. Right. So, is that abusive to yell Brooksy at a guy who's walking off after a six-hole playoff? After the event is over? I don't know. I, I don't think so. And I mean, it's rubbing salt in the wound. Sure. Like, fans have never rubbed salt in the wounds of other people well, participating in sports. Have golf ever dealt with something like this? I mean, they've dealt with, like, you can't talk about the 17th hole at Phoenix. Like, that's just fans going there and excited and drunk. I mean, I've been there. The, and, the name that keeps fun. coming up in texts is Patrick Reed, who, of course, is another huge villain. Mm-hmm. But I can't think and... But does it happen every hole? Because apparently that's that's the issue, right? Is It's everywhere he goes, every round he plays. And eventually that's going to make a guy mad if he's hearing that basically every hole for 72 holes throughout a tournament. Well, I, I'm not one to back Tiger here, but you don't think Tiger heard something every time he stepped up to a hole? Mm-hmm. Of course he did. For sure. You never heard any of this at a Tiger. I'm yeah. sure Tiger heard a lot worse than what Bryson DeChambeau... He probably did hear worse. Mm-hmm. I, I can tell you, having watched Tiger at the Phoenix Open that I went to, the only... PGA tournament I've ever been to, I can tell you no one said boo to him. Okay, but that's one. I, I'm, I'm just saying, like. The other issue is. He's he's hearing it on every hole. And the other issue is just because Tiger had to go through it doesn't mean that everyone else should. And Who, Who's what, everyone else? Do, okay, doesn't mean anyone else should. Okay. Have to. I don't agree with that. Well, again, I'm just listening to the golf people, the ones that are on the course, the ones that have been covering tournaments for years. That when they're saying it's never been worse, and this is the you know the worst they've ever seen, then it's problematic. I think and well, these are people that are aren't tr- picking sides. They're not saying, oh, this is... Brooks Kepka's fault. No, they're saying, look, DeShambo brought a lot of this on himself, but you win Brooksy, maybe come out and say something and it, it needs to, 
It needs to be dialed back. So would you agree that it's coming from golf media that might, just might, be trying to protect the game that they love? Yeah. And, and not necessarily the casual fan who just wants to finally be interested in a rivalry on the course that means something rather than just every guy is the same on the PGA Tour. Week after week after week. Finally, there's something to sink your teeth into. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, the reason I certainly agree with you that this is asinine that they would toss fans for yelling Brooksy at Bryson DeChambeau is that Bryson, it's like the uh, Radiohead song. You do this to yourself, and that's what really hurts. Like, Bryson opened himself up to all of this. And if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Also, I would have waited until the season was over. Have them play together at the Ryder Cup. The Tour Championship's coming up. Why not deal with this in the off season? You want to create a new code of conduct going into next year? You got time to figure this out. But to threaten people before the Tour Championship? I think it's going to be worse. I think the reason is that Bryson's probably saying that the fans got in his head and and maybe he's not saying exactly fans got in my head. That's why I lost the playoff. I had some chances and I blew it and it's because of the fans. It's the fans fault and the PGA doesn't want the fans to affect the winner at Eastlake. I think they're also worried that if it's clearly affecting him and, and it is, the last thing you want as a sport is confrontation between player and fan. And what if all of a sudden he's had enough and he grabs a fan? Like, we, we've seen that in various sports, and there's no... Like, golf is one of those fan, one of those sports where, like, it's not like there's seats and then the playing surface, right? You are right there. So... What if it gets physical? I think this is also proactive to try and ensure that that doesn't happen because it can do a lot of damage to a sport. Look how much damage the malice at the palace did to the NBA. It took them years to recover from that. A couple of texts to finish it off. Imagine the PGA trying to deal with Islander fan. It's a good text. And I'm in. David Wilcox, do the Bearcat where and when? Can I yell Brooksy for fun too from Fern the Yellow Walkman? He's in with you guys. Let me know. I remember back in the day, Lee, Sunday best. Sunday mornings with angry Al Armstrong, the Winchester Hawks. Mm -hmm. In game seven of the playoffs, both you and I went and watched game seven. A tough loss, I believe, to the Alexandra Glens. Mm -hmm. Uh, Remember it well. This will be a show excursion to match that one. AJ, me, Fern, Brent, and David Wilcox. Maybe we can get David Wilcox Maybe. to come play. Well, What's he up to? It's good. It's gonna have to be soon, AJ. Let's reach this out. Semifinals coming well, up in a day or two here. We'll get David Wilcox for the final. Also, Matt, I just want to let you know. Maybe you heard about this hmm? while you were away. Dean, Probably not. Dean Brown. Yep. Hosting in the box. Mm-hmm. 30 minute bed underneath him going to break before he went to break. I was not listening to that segment, but I think I was listening either to or from the to or from the golf course later in that show <laughs> and heard him referencing, I believe he had like a 48 minute segment or something. So it stands to reason 30 it was minute a bed. 30 minute bed. That's I, I don't know if we ever got to 30 minutes on Sunday best. I we was, would have come close a few times. I was feeling pretty good about myself after <laughs> Dean announced that. I'm not the worst anymore. All right, take a break. Uh, come back with more of your thoughts on this Brooksy debate. The PGA Tour, Jay Monahan, the commissioner, threatening the fans that they're going to get thrown out of the tournament if they yell Brooksy at East Lake. 
Will they follow through? Your thoughts at 12 1200. Lieber Sage. AJ Jackiebeck, Matt Connors, Vita on the drive on TSN 1200. Let's get back to the drive on the home of the Sens, TSN 1200. Welcome back to the drive. Lieber Sage, AJ Jackiebeck, Matt Connors, Vita. With you until 6 o'clock tonight. We're going to hear from Andre Tourney, head coach of the Arizona Coyotes, who joined Steve Lloyd and Kenny Walls in the box. We're going to have Ian Mendes, senior writer from The Athletic, on 420. We're going to go into the Red Blocks radio show and talk to Nate Bahar and Mike Wakefield. Mike Wakefield now with the Montreal Alouettes. They come in on Friday. And at 7.30, Canada and the U.S. Women's World Hockey Championship gold medal on the line tonight, 7.30, and here on TSN 1200. Also, the Jays are at home to Baltimore tonight. Four and a half games behind the wild card, but really need to start making up some ground here. Made up a game last night, but have to sweep the Orioles and have to get on a major run here. As we are in the last day of August and September, baseball rolls around. Uh, we'll get back to the golf talk. I uh, wanted to get your guys' thoughts on another fan incident with the Mets fans not very happy with their team. And they got out the, the double thumbs down, AJ and Matt, for their team over the last little while. They're booing their team. And the double thumbs down, booing their team. Well, the Mets kind of took this and ran with it. The players did. And when they started doing some positive things, some some home runs or RBIs, cashing in guys, you know, they point to each other. If a guy doubles in two, they look back to second base. Well, they've been doing this now, the Mets players. They've been double thumbs downing each other. I guess as mocking the fans for doing it to them. And now Javier Baez and Francisco Lindor have apologized to Mets fans. You're never winning that battle. You you never want to get into it with your own fans. You're never winning that battle. Said that they were sorry less than an hour before the first pitch last night. Followed a statement from the team saying that it's a gesture that they would stop making. They didn't mean to offend anybody. Interesting that the fans boo them and they start doing it as a dig to their own fans. As you said, AJ, doesn't seem like a good idea. (laughs) And now, maybe like you want in golf, the Mets brass down to the players have said, no, no, we're we're not doing this anymore. And they apologized to the fans. Javier Baez says, I didn't say the fans are bad. I love the fans, but like, I just felt like we were alone. The fans obviously want to win. They pay our salary, like everyone says, but like we want to win too. And the frustration got to us. I understand the frustration, but, you can't be doing that. <laughs> I mean, but you're laughing. No, I'm, I'm you're laughing. Kind, you're laughing because it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's kind of funny. But it, when you're mocking your own fans, that n- it never ends well. Never. If there is a team. I'm not a Mets fan. So no. that, I mean, I, I'd actually be laughing too if, if it was the Mariners. But. If you're paying for 81 games a year, you're not going to be laughing. Well, that's the question. For your own team, if they started doing it, like here in Ottawa, if the fans didn't like the way the Sens were playing and they started kind of booing them with the two thumbs down, and then the players took to it and said, you know what? Instead of, we're not going to go to center ice tonight and put our sticks in the air. We're going to go to center ice tonight and I'll give the thumbs down. (laughs) 
If any team I had told you this story was going to be about. Oh, I feel like the Mets would have been. <laughs> number one. Yeah, if if you told me it was for baseball, there, there's no other guess. It's the Mets. There's, who, there's who, no other guess. Who else would be there in sports? The Jets? Well, there's so many different football. The Jets are too bumbling to pull off something like this, though. <laughs> like, the Jets are just... They don't have the same tone deafness as the Mets. Maybe maybe the Raiders. I'm trying to think, like, picking fights with your own fans... The Raiders are, I think, the other team that comes to mind for me. Mm-hmm. But I it's... don't know. The, Ra- the Raiders fans are pretty diehard and supportive, even through a lot of bad times. No, I agree. And it, like you would think, Philadelphia, if you're thinking of fans who are really hard on your team, but I don't think the the Eagles or the Sixers or the Phillies, like they would never do that. And the Raiders, it's it's more to do, like, I could see the team turning on their fans. I don't think the fans would deserve it. But just thinking of it from that perspective, the, the, it's, it's the Mets all the way. Like, I can't think of another team. I'm trying to talk myself into the Raiders, but I don't think it's the Raiders. Does anyone else come to mind for you? I mean, maybe the Jets. As you said, they are a little bit more bumbling is a good word to describe. But New York is so tough. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of tough markets. New York York seems tougher because it's the biggest and it gets the most attention. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think that this will stop Mets fans from doing it? This apology? No chance. They're going to do it more. And I guess it's okay, right? They paid their tickets. Yeah, they're going to do it more to taunt them. Like, we can do this, but you can't. Do you not think that this is just going to encourage them to do it more? Because they won this battle. Just like I think it's going to encourage patrons. Oh, 100%. At East Lake. Because we're getting a lot of texts. What if someone yells, Brycey? Kepper. I feel like if there is another fan base, like I, 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 I will say if there's another fan base to do this, mm-hmm. it would be Philly. Feels like Philly and like, and I, I do feel like the Eagles, like they were a bumbling mess last year. I know you are quite pleased about that. I'm hoping even more this year. I feel like. If there was another team, it would be the Eagles. But the Eagles, and I don't want to give them too much credit here, are smart enough to not do this back to their are own they? fans. Yeah, I think they are. Because I. P- people... What about Nick Sirianni? <laughs> Is he smart enough to not do to pick a fight with the Eagles uh... fans? How long till it goes sour for Nick Sirianni? If that guy can pull the Eagles through and make them into a contending team. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like he's got a whole lot of a a chance to do so. <laughs> you know when you say a coach's name and it brings me pure joy and laughter? Mike McCarthy. No, that, that one doesn't. No. Nick Sirianni, though, makes me laugh every time. Every time. Even more than Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell, it's just two of like a generic name like how many Dan Campbell's are there in the world a million how many Nick Sirianni's are there or Sirianni is it Sirianni or Sirianni does it matter you're the linguist that's why I'm asking because I don't know I've said it both ways I thought I hate being inconsistent I thought it was Nick Sirianni okay I'm gonna go with that I thought but I could screw it up very easily no I'm gonna go with that attention to Eagles Stuff all that much. I but. think that's what works against Dan Campbell, though. 
It's just like two really common generic names. <laughs> Nick, common generic name. Sirianni, that sticks with you. AJ, the Philly fans aren't stupid enough to do this, or the Philly players not stupid enough to do this back to their fans, though. I don't think. You? Well, the Met players were, so... Yeah, but that's why they're the Mets. And I feel like baseball players have this, and I know that that's a really generic thing to say, but they have this part about them, like, you can't boo us because we're professional baseball players. We'll ask Ian when he comes on. Next question, because it was stupid. Ian has said a lot of different times how challenging covering baseball was because the players. They're not all bad, but as a whole, that's a very tough sport to cover because the players are just in their own world. So maybe the Phillies are the best bet because the harshest markets for baseball are in the Northeast. New York, Boston, Philadelphia. Lee fans threw waffles on the ice and players did salute gate. But not saluting your fans is not the same as rubbing rubbing it in their face with the thumbs down. Now, could you see Bryce Harper doing this? He's the one guy, as soon as you guys started talking about it, that was the name that came to mind. Just to AJ's credit, that maybe the Phillies are the other team. But, again, like, if you give me 10 guesses as to what team gave the thumbs down to their fans, the Mets are coming I'm using times. the first nine of them <laughs> on the Mets, and then I'm, I'm being Rick Campbell, challenging the challenge, and going... Even if you told me I was wrong nine times, I'm guessing it a tenth time just in case. Because there's no way it's any other team. It's got to be the Mets. Take a break. Come back with more of the drive. Andre Tourney still to come. Ian Mendez had a 20-question trivia. Trivia Tuesdays. Ugh, you want to feel bad about yourself? On his athletic column and it was like he brought when he was here we'll talk to him about that his and, tweet about it though lee yep fun little challenge for sends fans today the hardest trivia challenge i've ever put together wow 20 multiple choice questions on a wide range of sends trivia average score right now five out of 20 so and, i beat the average and barely rem- and remember that's probably from a very hardcore bunch of people that pay for the athletic, right? Five out of 20. Yikes. 25%. We'll talk to you about that more when the drive continues here on TSN 1200. Let's get back to the drive on the home of the Sens. TSN 1200. Just a few minutes in this segment. Ian Mendes at 420. We'll replay Andre Turney just after 5 o'clock. Head coach of the Arizona Coyotes. Join Steve Lloyd and Kenny Walls. Red Blacks radio show at 6. Nate Bahar, Mike Wakefield on that program. A recap of the week of the Canadian Football League. And then at 7.30, it will be Canada and the U.S. for gold. The Women's World Hockey Championships. AJ, 200 million euros. Mbappe. Real Madrid made a new offer to PSG, but have not heard back. And uh, don't think it's going to happen now. That window, the transfer window closes at midnight, which would be, what, 5 o'clock our time? Uh, Midnight there is, uh, is it midnight in England or midnight in continental Europe? C-E-S-T. Yeah, I don't know what that means. Okay. It's coming up soon, though. Yeah, it's either 6 or 7 o'clock, 5 or 6 hours, depending on Mm -hmm. if it's England or the rest of Europe. Yeah, I I mean, it's an interesting one, right? If you're PSG, you're torn between the fact that 
obviously you're going to be a better team with Mbappe and Messi on the same team. And, you know, they've already won. It really is a miracle that Jonathan David and Lille beat PSG last year to win, win the French League title. Like, right out of the gate, PSG's already got four wins in four games. They're going to win the league. So, like, that's that wasn't quite Leicester City winning the league, but it, it, it's close. Major in my In my opinion, what Jonathan David and that Lille team did, and David scored 13 goals last year. So, um, they're going to win the league. It's all about winning the Champions League. Only one French team has ever won the Champions League, Marseille and... You know, they, that was done, there were cheating allegations and bribery allegations in France the year that it happened. So, you know, it was kind of looked upon in a negative light when they did it and they were punished for it afterwards. Basically what they did was they fixed a game so that they could dress all their starters in the Champions League final without having to dress them in their last league game. Anyways, that's like 30 years ago. So 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 it means a lot to French soccer to have an actual champion of the Champions League. And for PSG, much like Man City, who are both owned by basically governments in the Middle East, one Qatar and one Abu Dhabi, like, that's kind of that last line of respect that they haven't reached yet is winning the champions league. And so what matters to you more getting the 200 million for Mbappe or do you let him walk like Lionel Messi walked for nothing? But if you're PSG and you're run by Qatar and I mean, it's 200 million really going to mean that much to you anyways. Well, my, my question to you as a casual fan, why would PSG do this? Do what? Why would they even consider doing this? Selling Mbappe? Yeah. Because he's going to leave in a year when he's a free agent anyways. So do you sell him for $200 million Or do you let him walk for nothing? It's a lot of money. But if it was any other team in the world outside of Man City, you would take the $200 million. You'd say, all right, you know what? We got to run this as a business, but... When you're run by the government of Qatar, as we know, there's a reason the World Cup's there in 2022, and it's not because of their record on human rights and treating migrant workers. It's not very good. No. They got it because they greased some palms. So, $200 million to these Qatari... Royals that basically have you know kind of unlimited money. Does that matter, or does it matter? You know what? We we really want to win the Champions League, and our best chance to win the Champions League is with Mbappe and Messi playing on the same team for a year, even. Mm-hmm. That's probably what they're weighing. But he's leaving. He's got a dream. Mbappe has always had a dream of going to play. For Real Madrid, that's where he wants to go. So the question is, does it happen now for $200 million, or does it happen in a year for nothing? Okay, so I'll reverse it. Why would Real Madrid pay $200 million now if they knew that they were getting him next year? Yeah, I mean, Florentino Perez, you would think, you know, based on all those Super League conversations, like poor Florentino, they're, they got no money. and It is a great question. Can sell a lot of shirts, but I mean, you're going to sell a lot of shirts in a year, anyways. Exactly. <laughs> so it's a foregone conclusion that he will go to Real Madrid when his contract expires. I think so, based on just everything I've read. Okay. Anyway, that deadline coming up soon, and uh, right now reports are it does not look like. It's going to happen. Big day for uh, Atletico Madrid, Mm -hmm. the uh, owners of our soccer team in town, Atletico Ottawa, because Antoine Griezmann 
is set to exit Barcelona and return to Atletico Madrid, where he had the bulk of his success. So that's a big signing for Atletico Madrid. Okay, excellent. Um, 580 CFRA news update. AJ will have what you need to know. Quick text in here about Ian's quiz. It's as advertised. I'm a lifelong Sens fan, season ticket holder since day one. I've attended virtually every home game and watched virtually every away game on TV. I got three out of 10, three out of 20. Okay, well, we'll ask Ian why he made it so tough for everybody in the four o'clock hour. Ian Mendez, Andre Tourney, left over five on the drive still to come. And then we'll get you into that Red Blacks radio show and the Women's World Hockey Championship gold medal game, Canada and the U.S. That doesn't get any better than that. Coming up at 7.30 here on TSN 1200.